Hi, everybody. So um, I want to do one more example of Bayesian inference in a very simple problem, which is we looked at before, which is uh, you flip a coin a bunch of times, you collect, count the number of heads, and then you ask, what does that tell you about the general question of, is this a fair coin or not? And we looked at that in the context of maximum likelihood estimation, and now we're going to do it uh, from the Bayesian point of view. So what are the elements of a Bayesian experiment? Well, uh, as we saw before, first of all, we need a statistical model. And our statistical model is the same one that we looked at in the past. Namely, we're going to assume that uh, our coin is modeled by a Bernoulli random variable with a parameter p, which is the chance of getting heads when you flip the coin. And the likelihood of getting h heads in n flips is given by the binomial distribution, which we've now seen a bunch of times. Given a particular probability p of getting heads, the probability of getting h heads is n choose h, p to the h, 1 minus p to the n minus h. So that should be quite familiar at this point. It's n independent flips of a coin where the probability of getting heads is p. The other ingredients of our Bayesian analysis are a prior distribution on p and some data. So the prior distribution is our impression of what the coin chance of heads is before we do any experiments. And in this case, I'm going to assume that we make no assumptions about that. We're just going to assume that all the probabilities of getting heads are equally likely. Of course, they have to be between 0 and 1. So we're going to choose the uniform distribution, which says that the probability density is constant for any probability p between 0 and 1. And finally, we need some data. And our data is just we flipped the coin n times, and we got h heads. So our data is more or less the numbers h heads out of n flips. And what happens in Bayesian inference is we try to construct a posterior distribution using Bayes' theorem, which tells us, given the fact that we got h flips out of n, h heads out of n flips, what's the probability distribution on p that follows from that um, from that data in light of our priors? And of course, that comes out of Bayes' theorem, and uh, it's fairly simple in this case. Uh, so Bayes' theorem says, remember, that the probability, the posterior probability, the probability of h given the data, is the probability of the data given p. That's the likelihood of having gotten h heads as a function of the parameter p, times our prior distribution on p, divided by the total probability, which is a kind of normalizing constant of h. And concretely putting in what we had on the previous slide, we see that the probability of p given h is the binomial function. This is how likely it is to have gotten the data h heads in n flips, given a value p for the probability. The posterior distribution, which is not visible here because it's equal to 1. And then we've divided by p of h, which is the normalizing constant. And I've written it out here, because, and you can see why uh, its, its purpose. It guarantees that if you integrate the probability of p given h uh, over all uh, values, you're going to get 1. So um, for any particular choice of the number of heads, the total probability of getting some p is 1. And that has to be the case if since this is a probability distribution. So as we saw, we now have a formula for the posterior distribution. We can just wrap up the constants, which were the binomial coefficient and the total probability, and just call it a. And we get this function p to the h, 1 minus p to the n minus h. If you plot it, you'll see that it let's, looks maybe something like this. This is not very lovely, where the peak, as we saw in our discussion of maximum likelihood, happens at h over n. So this peak, which in the maximum likelihood situation was called the maximum likelihood estimate for p, since we're in a Bayesian situation and it's the maximum of the posterior, 
This is called the maximum, maximum a posteriori estimate, or MAP, and it's H over N in this case, just like in maximum likelihood. The difference is that now we're taking into account this whole distribution rather than just asking where does the maximum occur. Now, in Bayesian inference, it's often more useful or more maybe a little bit more stable or more informative not to use the maximum a posteriori estimate, but to use the mean of the posterior distribution. So if I redraw my picture from before, where we have this curve that is sort of bumped over towards one, the a posteriori, maximum a posteriori estimate sort of ignores all of this region over here. And a better estimate somehow of where to, uh, if we have to give a single number, a better choice of that estimate would be the mean of this distribution or the expected value. And the complication for that is if we want to do that, we want to compute the integral of the post of P times the posterior distribution dP from 0 to 1, which is the expected value of P given H. We actually need to know the um, normalizing constant. And that leads into some algebra. So um, plugging in the value for the likelihood, we have the, so A, as we mentioned before, is the has to be the denominator. If we use for our posterior distribution, P given H is a constant, P to the H, 1 minus P to the N minus H, then to make the total integral be 1, A has to be 1 over the integral of this. And the mean is obtained by multiplying by p, and so that increases the exponent of h to h plus 1. And so the integral that we would have to compute is this integral. And thankfully, if you go into the literature, you will find that this, this particular kind of integral, where you have to look at a power of p times a power of 1 minus p integrated from 0 to 1, has a name. It's called the beta integral. And for values of a and b that are integers, it's all been worked out for you. It's equal to a plus b over a b times 1 over a plus 1 over the binomial coefficient a plus b choose a. Uh, this is a nice exercise in integration by parts. And um, if you are interested in pursuing it in the notes, there are some hints for how to go about it. But we're just going to plug it all in. And if you use the fact that we are interested in the cases where a is uh, h plus 1 and b is n minus h plus 1. That gives us a. So a is then 1 over b of a, b. And then the mean is 1 over b of a, b times b of a, uh, sorry, b of, yeah, b of a plus 1b because of this h plus 1. And you sort through everything that you've got there, you end up with this is equal to h plus 1 over n plus 2. So um, the posterior mean, one way to think about it is it assumes in some sense that at the beginning, you flip the coin already two times and you got one head. So it it's as if you had a little bit of prior information that said that the coin was fair. That's kind of built into this analysis. And if you go back to our original numbers, with 55 out of 100 flips, the maximum a posteriori estimate is 0.55, and the posterior mean is 0.549, which is only a tiny bit less, but it reflects this kind of prior bias back towards a fair coin. So there's a lot more work that one that one can do in, in this particular situation. This is called the beta binomial distribution. And for example, one can consider a non-uniform prior where you might believe that the coin is fair. And um, there's some discussion of that in the notes if you'd like to pursue this further.